Welcome back everybody, this is Always back with the next video of JavaScript Essential Training Series. So, in the last few movies we've been looking at the core functionality of JavaScript such as functions, arrays, loops, condition statements, and that's the great way to start with JavaScript. But of course, it does not run out by itself, you can't present anything with JavaScript. So, our script will be attached to a web page, and it's the web page that comes first. They bring our script with them, not the other way around. So our page, whether a simple page or it's a complicated website, whether it's a canvas that we are printing on or the environment we are affecting. So we must be able to reach from JavaScript into these pages and cause them pages to reach back into our script. We do that by understanding the DOM, the document object model, and consider knowing your way around the DOM to be a single most important skill for JavaScript programmer to develop. But this is a term where people get confused about it. I have few questions before when I was learning DOM, I was always asked that, what is a DOM? Is it a language? Is this the part of JavaScript? What is it? Then you look it up on the Google and you find the phrase, the document object model is an application programming interface that defines logical structure of well-performed and XML and HTML document. And it really doesn't help most people, but it's quite a simple idea at heart. Now, every web page resides inside a browser window, which can be considered as an object. A document object represents the HTML document that is displayed in that window. And the document has various properties that refers to other objects, which allow access to and modification of that document content. We have this simple page here. I'm just going to show you the preview of that. So this is the page. I have this h1 tag. I have a navigation tag, paragraph tag, and testing DOM. Now, how do we access these objects in JavaScript? Now, how do we write JavaScript to grab hold one of those no objects? So it really depends. The question you have to ask is, is it unique? The thing you're after, is it unique in the document? I mean, that means, does it have an ID? So if you could look at here, we have the ID for nav element, right? So uh, let's say an on-order list, I need to ask a question, does it have an ID in HTML document? So we don't have any ID here. So you know that you can add the ID and class attributes to any of your HTML elements, but that a class can be added to multiple elements, but an ID should be applied to one. It should be unique. So if the element that you're after has a unique ID, you can grab it in JavaScript by using the possible most important method of document object, which is document.getElementById. Now let's add few IDs to over some elements. So we have this uh, paragraph tag. I'm going to add an ID for that. So let's just say paragraph. We need to make it smaller so we can access this. So P1. Okay. And testing DOM, I'm going to give it ID of, uh, let's just say article. Let's save the file. Now we can access them by ID. Let's go to script.js. And here it's the most common method you will use by using JavaScript with HTML. So you will use document dot get element by ID. If you notice, we have a few more methods here, such as get elements by class name, get elements by name, get elements by tag name. And here we have elements because class can be applied to multiple elements, right? So we can access by tag names as well. So there could be multiple anchor tags. There could be multiple p tag into your HTML document. So that is why we have get elements, not element. Now I'm going to show you first the uh, get element by ID and then press enter. Now we open the parentheses, add a quotation. Now we type the element ID. Make sure it's a case sensitive. So we go back here and if I want to grab this paragraph, so I will just copy this P1 and then we'll just type that in to our JS file and then add a semicolon. What does this do? Well, we're going to call it, but not like this. 
we're going to create a variable and set it to the result of calling that. So if I want to grab hold of this p tag, I will just create a variable. Let's just do it. Uh, type var and we can name our variables. Let's say p1. You can name the same as your ID. Doesn't really matter. And there we go. So we have created a variable and stored that element into this variable. And what we're doing here is creating a new variable and it's really a handle to that place in a DOM. We can then use that variable. In this case, I have called its uh, p1 to read properties of that element. You can call methods of elements. You can even change that element. Now, it's important to understand that when, when I do this get element by ID, I'm not just making it a detached copy of a single piece. Now I have a handle right into the document and I can use it to go down to the child nodes. I can use it to go up to the parent node and it's not a detached copy of one element. It's more likely the pathway into the particular place in the DOM. Now let's look at the second method we just looked before, get elements by tag name. Now let's go back to index.html. And here you can see we have multiple tags here, such as li list item. We have three tags in here. We have a p tag twice here, right? Now, once we call get elements by ID, then what it does, what it does basically, it just creates an array and it puts the values zero based. Okay, so index would be a zero base. Let's create that first, and then we'll look at that. So we create another variable, and I'll just say navy Gation is equal to document dot get element by tag name and then we open parentheses and here we just pass in li and I will save the file now what it's doing it's accessing li all the elements what how many elements you have in in um, li it's accessing that now after it access that it will create an array of those elements the first element he gets, it will put that as zero index, and the second one would be one index, third, second index. So it creates an array. Now, sometimes you might find, uh, let's say we create another var, and I'll just say, well, well, test, test is equal to document dot, let's just say a, let's get element by tag name. And let's say we don't have any tag which we are calling in our document. Let's say I have pretty much uh, the most common tags here. But what we do, we will just uh, delete these p tags from here. And then I'm pretty sure we don't have any p tag in our document. Now, if I call a p tag, now what it's going to do, because we don't have any p tag in our document, it would still create an array, but the array would be empty. Now let's look at the HTML page. I have added a few IDs here, such as a main container, P1 ID for P tag, and we have some list items. Now we have seen how to access this by ID or by tag. Let me give you an example. So we go back to script.js, I've already deleted everything. Now first let's access that P1 tag, which is ID, and we can access that paragraph tag. So let's type var, which is a variable keyword, and let's just name our variable p1 is equal to, I'm going to type document dot get element by id, add parentheses, add double quotation here, type the p1, which is an id for tag. Now we have accessed that and we have stored that p1 into p1 variable in JavaScript. Now I want to check a few things. So We'll check what is the type of this element and how many, uh, what is the inner HTML and does it have any child nodes. So we can check them by typing console. Well, the console is just the method where we can write something on a console. We've been writing a document dot write, but I'll show you the console method as well. So console dot log. And then here, uh, I'll just type in, this is just a string. So this is the oh, what is it okay let's just say what is the type of this element 
and then here add comma and then type p1 which is our variable dot I will type node type okay that's another method we can call that and then I'm going to close parentheses add a semicolon now we can access the inner HTML so we go back to index.html see this is the inner HTML we have in this tag which says hello this is a paragraph so we can access that as well I can write that on a page or I can write that on the console so let's look at the console one first so console I'm not used to with JavaScript a lot so that's why I mainly work in Java so I'll keep typing those keywords and all that stuff so let's start console.log and I'll say this is the inner HTML and then we can type comma here and call the variable name p1 dot inner html and then we can check if it does if it has any child nodes so we can call console dot log and then here we type does it have any child node okay comma call the variable name p1 dot type child nodes okay and then I'll save the file let's go back to this page and I'm going to refresh this and here you can see that what is the type of the element one what is the inner HTML we're getting hello this is a paragraph does it have a child node yes it's a it's giving me the child node list it has text which says hello this is a paragraph so this has the text as a child node in it we can access that as well now we can access uh, whatever we want by the tag name as well so we have some list items here okay we have these list items and we're going to show you how to access them so let's go back to javascript file and then let's type and then i'm going to type list items is equal to document dot get element by tag and by name by tag name and then here we pass in li which is a list item and then we can check how many list items we have in in the document so we can just write that on a console if you want to write on a page you can just document dot write but i'll just write on a console dot log and then here type we have I'm going to add a code here and then give space get out from the double quotes type comma and I called a list item and then I can get dot length method on it let's type comma again and we can say we have that many list and we just type items here as well items okay let's save the file and let's go refresh the page now we can see that we have three items three list items in it let's to make sure so read from the top we don't have any list item yep we only have three list items now there's one more thing i want to show you here is uh, if i go back to javascript file first let's create an id for that so we have a nav element okay and then in the nav element i have this uh, on order list and then we have this list item now if we say that uh, how many p tags we have maybe we have like multiple p tags like tens and thousands of tags there right but sometimes you want to access only the element which exists in particular element so let's say we will just type a p tag here and I'll say hello world close it and now we only have a p tag in this one but what if I go back to JS file and we'll change this to p tag let's save it and now if I refresh the page give me one tag okay it's giving me we have only one p tag now what I can do here because a one p tag means it creates an array so the index uh, the array starts from zero right so at least it's telling me that we have two p tags now what if I create another 
let me change that to li first to give you an example we have this list items now let's say we have an anchor tag here let me just change this to copy this and then we can paste it here and then here I'm going to add another anchor tag as well let's just delete this let's add anchor tag we'll type href and I'll just say index.html okay close it and then close your anchor tag just before the p tag okay let's save the file now we have like five or four anchor tags but now if I go back to JS file and I will create another variable and I'll say a tag is equal to and then I'm going to call from list items okay and then get element by tag name and then here we type a as a tag name now you can see we have two tag names but now if I call this uh, a tag and store the list item so what it will do it will not read the whole page it will actually read only the the list item so only it will only read the list item and will give us three as anchor tag it will not give us this anchor tag as well because we're only accessing from the list item so a tag is equal to list item dot get element so i'm getting the a tag elements from list items all right, so it's going to only read from the list item. So whatever have uh, whatever a tags uh, will be available in the list item, that's what I'm going to get into. That's what I'm going to get. So uh, that was a demonstration of how to access HTML elements with JavaScript. So in the next video, we are going to learn how to change these elements through JavaScript. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.